What is up, everybody? It's your main Eric Pate here. I'm your the only guy to just, for your race review and preview informations. Information. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. I'm just and I'm just messing with ya. There's a few other YouTubers I watch for previews and reviews, and I put his channel. Well, I put his channel link and make some really good stop motion videos. I put his link in the description below, or just search up. Um, Eric E. Step. That is C R I C E S E S T E P P. Somewhere close to that. I'll just put his link in the description below. But uh, why am I? Why did I even make him? Why did I even talk about that? Well, I'm okay. I forgot to review. Okay, so I reviewed Kansas, but I forgot to upload a video. So I'm just gonna review it again quickly, and then I'm gonna talk about. A short track this weekend we're at a Santa Mile. So we ran this new mile track like uh, about five weeks ago. We're going to another one. Which one are we going to this time? Shut up, please, and let me talk. Okay. So anyway, so reviewing. Uh, the Kansas race. I have to say, at the beginning, I thought it was going to be a Penske day. Like, seriously. Team Penske. We're about the first part, first hundred laps or so. Leader was either Joe Logano or Ryan Blaney. We're, we're leading. And I was like, oh, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a Penske day. And then I was like, man, Stage two, I was like, oh my god, please, no. You already dominated, like, six, like, you already dominated. And this guy was dominant, was dominating the race again, and now it's Kevin Harvick. I was like, dude, you already dominated, like, I don't know, like, eight of eight races this year. Please stop dominating all these races. That is seriously me. Every time I see Kevin Harvick dominating in 2018, I was like, please, please, Kevin. You are. You're dominant. You dominated like 10 races this season. You're dominating a lot. And then another driver dominate here and there. Here and there. Kyle Bush or Burnt. Other two of the big three. They. Between them two, they're probably the lead dominated. Truex probably dominated two. Two I know of, out of the club. Let's see, no. Yeah, he dominated about three this. Three. He dominated. Out of club. Kentucky. And Chris half of Richmond. On the other hand, Crack was only dominated one I can remember. And that is, um. And that is. This year's Coke 600. Like. Like every time when Harvick's in the lead. Dominating. In an event. Let's go. Like it goes from exciting to. Okay, I don't actually fall asleep, but still, it's like that. And I like seeing other drivers here and there dominate. And normally, when Kevin Harvick is dominating, he's not, not only, like, he already punched a ticket. He already punched his ticket in of stage one at Kansas. To the round of eight. And he's most likely... Going to Homestead. But I don't think he's going to come in as the championship favorite. I get to who I think is the championship favorite later. But, <laughs> so, I mentioned. So, if you have not seen my Dover pre review, Kevin Harvick dominated. I mentioned that Kevin Harvick for like the first 320 laps or so of the race. Was basically I thought I thought was basically this.
Like, I was listening to it, by the way. And, like, basically, that's how it is. Is When it's, when, um, Harvick dominates, it's basically just me sleeping. Because I know he's probably going to win the race. And, I literally was laughing. I'm not kidding. I wasn't being rude or anything, but I just thought it was funny. How? He screwed up. Oh, I think lap 3.30? He came down pit road to get to get a set of tires, set of Goodyears, set of four Goodyears, and two cans of Sunoco. I, during the pit stop, something hit Harvick's um, valve stem. It's expected to be a lug nut. And, oh yeah, it was a luck nut. And then, Harvick. Harvick didn't even make it a full lap. And, I don't know why NASCAR put him on the damage vehicle policy. I think, no, I think NASCAR put, no, NASCAR did not put him on the crash club because basically, if, if the body's damaged, they have to go on the clock, I think. They have to go on a six minute clock and that starts once you hit pit row. And then it and then it either stops if you use the full six minutes or um or when you exit pit row, which I think is dumb. It should the clock should start once you hit your pit box. I if my pit box Like if they said if they said uh if the caution comes out and normally, and my, and normally at Bristol, under caution, so I'm gonna use Bristol for example. Um, Bristol Motor Speedway has two pit rows, one on each, one on the front stretch, one on the back stretch. And, um, and they have this rule that under green, you can, during green flag stops, you can pit. On the side, your pit stall is on. So if your pit stall, pit stall is pit stall number one, that will be right by turn one, and you can come in turn four. Or if my pit, or if my pit stall is pit stall, pit stall, um, twenty one. That's gonna be by turn three. So I'm gonna have to enter in through, through turn three, turn one, turn two. Then I can come out, come out of pit row in three. But the rule is under caution. It's one pit row. And you may want to know when it is under caution. You said it is one pit row. So where do they have to enter in? They they have to enter in two. Come out one. So basically, how it is is that pit. So you have to come into two, drive the whole length, stay on the apron in three, on three and four, come down. They come down the front stretch pit stall. Then they can, then pit stall, then turn one will be the pit exit. And I was like, and I was like. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But, um, and speeding penalties, I don't know how they would do that at Bristol. Okay, why am I even talking about Bristol? No, why am I even talking about the short track in Bristol, Tennessee? I'm about to talk about the other short track. Anyway, back to my point is that, Kevin Harvick, back to the video, um, Harvick was basically dominating, and then he... And... Oh, I was talking about the damage vehicle policy. How it's all done. But anyway, the moral of the story at Bristol is that what was under caution. And it takes me one minute to get to my stall. And they need five minutes of work. Yeah. So. Like, what if I need more work done, but I used five minutes and didn't make minimum speed?
That's what. But what if it needs six minutes of work? It takes me one minute of pistol to get my, to my pistol. Which I could be pistol one. Wait. Like, I could be pistol one. And I bristle, I have to drive that thing, yellow flag, and I freaking, um, and I freaking lost a freaking minute because of it. They need to change demolition vehicle policy rule. I don't like it. I don't like how, oh, clock starts once you enter pit row, and it stops once you exit. That's like a minute down in, that's like a minute in the toilet. Minute in the freaking toilet. Like, like if it takes me 30 seconds to get with my pistol, or Bristol, it takes me another minute and I have to get out. To get out. They can only work in my car for four minutes, and if I'm almost out, they said, oh, you're disqualified. So I hold six minutes, I'll go, that's freaking dumb. And I don't like it. I don't like all the rules like set up that way. But anyway, yeah, without seeing and everything, they just got to change tire. And that took them like 10 seconds to do. Of course, change the tire, and I think Harvick was two laps down after that. He was running about 15th until Clint Boyer, his teammate Clint Boyer, brought out a caution. And Clint Boyer, I believe, hit the wall. Eric Amarola, also Harvick's teammate. Was he continuing to win at Dover? Then Clint Bar bought out the caution with 11 laps to go. Chase Elliott stayed out. And we won came to the pit row. Except for one. Except for two drivers. Except for three drivers? I don't remember. But I know one of them was Chase. One was Brad and one was... Oh, wait. There was three. Chase, Brad, and Denny. I'm surprised that last time Chase Elliott and Mini Himlin before Dover finished was one and two. They didn't finish one and two, but last time they were one and two. One wrecked the other. Um, Danny Himlin wrecked Chase Elliott, and then Elliott got him back a couple weeks later, and then then I don't didn't get it at Dover how they finished one and two and had no problems. But anyway. So then Harvick, of course, won stage two, and I was pretty, I was like, please, just someone stop him, please, please. Like, like Kaya Bush, all his wins this year, he led the last, except for Texas and Colt 600, he led the last. Like, when he did win, he led, like, the last. Five laps, probably. And I freaking think. I think leading. I think only leading last few laps should do it instead of dominating. Hey, if I'm a NASCAR driver, I want to fight with someone at the end for the win. But if the guy right behind me spins out, I guess they want to win under caution. Or battling with someone, or in the rain. That means like, oh, I just got the white flag. I'm still winning. Crushing comes out. Dang it! Did I win? And how that is is that if the caution comes out on the white flag lap, so it can be a regulation actually too. So it's not just an overtime thing. It's in regulation. I don't know if I mentioned this with Dover and Chase Elliott won it on the final lap. So once a light flag waves, that is the final lap, no matter what. No matter what. No matter if the next flag is checkered, no matter if the next flag is a caution. When that white flag is in the air, the race, if a caution comes out, the race is over. They will display the checkered flag, they will not try to attempt, because Heck, I could be one yard away from check flag, caution comes out, and they said, oh, by the way, restart. I go, are you kidding me? I was a hundred yards away. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? So that's why, that's why I think, um, that's why I like this, um, white flag, white flag, dance flag, in rules. 
rule. Because once that white flag's in the air, it's gonna be. Once that white flag is in the air, next flag's in the race, and I like it. It's better that way. It's better. It's not like, oh, we have to restart. But they think it's kind of a little unfair to the guy in first, because he could, like I said, he could be one yard away. Caution comes out, one yard. He's one yard away, and he doesn't win the race because. NASCAR said we were restarting. There was a caution. So no matter what, no matter if it's in regulation or in overtime, anytime the white flag is in the air, next flag ends the race. But anyway, and then Harvick got a speeding penalty and a green flag gets lost. I was like, yes! Yes! You just got... Stop! What do you got? What do you got to say about that, Kevin? And Harvick, when he gets a penalty, even at the beginning of the race, he doesn't come back from it. Like, like, oh, Kevin, Kyle Busch is younger than you. And when Kyle Busch gets a spin penalty at the beginning of a race, at the end, Kyle Busch is leading. Guy Bush will, will be leading. I think he started dead last at Richmond. Dead last. At Richmond. Who won the race? Kyle Bush. I just started dead freaking last at Kansas. And this. Yeah, at Richmond. I don't know why I say Kansas. Yeah, yeah. So, there have been some changes, though, so to who's the favorite for the title now. I'm going to go ahead and talk about that. Chase Elliott winded up in victory lane at the end of the day at Kansas. He won. And his number nine, Mountain Dew Chevrolet. And guess what? Chase Elliott's winning tradition is. Was, was also his stats, Bill Elliott's winning tradition. Anytime Chase or Bill wins. Anytime Chase or Bill wins, Dawsonville does this thing. That's the hometown of Chase Elliott. At the pool room, Rick Allen go, All right, Dawsonville, pool room. If you're down there, you're there. Listen for the siren. And what the siren is, and I don't know, I don't know what, the, what Rick Allen was talking about when he was saying. Sirens are ringing in Dawsonville for Chase Elliott. I know someone's commenting on my photo on Kyle Bush Nation. You may want to know what that sounds like. I actually heard it before. It's like a tornado siren. This is it. Every time Chase wins, Chase or Bill Elliott wins, they will sound this. And I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool thing. Let's talk about the Martinsville, the race. So let's talk about Martinsville. So, I mentioned brief. Before Dover, I mentioned in a Dover review that Chase Elliott didn't even finish one and two. Last time, then I said last time they were one and two was 2017 at Martinsville. Now that's exactly where they're going this week. That's exactly where the race will be this week, tomorrow, as this video was made the night before. And. I was so mad at Denny Hamlin. I was so freaking mad. It was unreal. Denny Hamlin's guy Bush's teammate. I was so mad at Denny Hamlin. I wasn't mad at Chase, but I was mad at Denny Hamlin. Here's what happened. Restart. I think it was four more times 
Left time Ironville. Jay Taylor ran in into Brad Kozlowski just a little bit. Kozlowski wasn't really eh, too mad. He was. Chase was just trying to have an aggressive restart, trying to win his first career Muncie Energy Cup Series race. And Chase was in the playoffs, so was Denny Emma, and so was Brad Kozlowski. And, well, Brad didn't really care. Just as long as he had a good run at uh, Phoenix or um, Texas, which he managed to. And, um, three more times. It was a good lap until they got into turn three. Danny Hamlin spun chase. Three laps to go. Martinsville Speedway, three laps to go. And Martinsville Speedway got to see the first overtime. There will have not been an overtime. In Martinsville history, there ever since the overtime rules came out, there has not been one single overtime at Martinsville Speedway. And they saw until last year. One more time. No. It was three laps ago, like I mentioned. And a lot of people were booing at Hamlin. They were like, Boo! Like, I got a text from, I didn't know the incident happened, because I was at Mozilla's Pizza that night. I watched most of the race, I missed like the last 60 laps, because me and my family, we went out for dinner, and then, um, we did some shopping after. We were, at, we decided to go to Mozilla's. And I got a text, and my phone went off. So I grabbed my phone, I figured it was going to be my papa, because he was going to tell me who won the race. I looked at it. Dan Hamlin just wrecked out Chase Elliott, turd. And he was saying that to Hamlin. He was calling Hamlin the turd. I was like, really? How long ago did this happen? He said, just now, three laps to go. Just happened. I go, oh, is there an overtime? He goes, mm hmm. And the person who broke through. So now, here's, the fun here's how the final restart happened at Mindsdale. This is actually how tense racing could be at Martinsville because it's a half mile. This is actually how tense it can be. It was Kyle Busch on the inside. Danny Hamlin on the outside. Or, oh, it was the other way around. But I know Kyle Busch, we started second. Danny Hamlin started first. We started first. Martin Truex Jr. started behind Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch got a good push from MTJ. Later on, the win. Later on, in Martin Truex Jr. By the way, later on, became the 2017 Monster Energy Cup Series champion. Anyway, and then um, Kyle got an excellent push from NTJ. No one wanted him on twin after what he did. I was like, please hope someone but him would win. About two minutes later, I got. I got a text. Kyle Bush wins. Big wreck on the front stretch. I'm going to get to that for a second in a second because I did watch. I did watch in the highlights what all took place on the last, in the last ten laps, even including the ones with the overtime, including the one between three to go and the start of overtime, and um. Turned out, Hemman did intentionally spin Chase Elliott, but anyway, and then Truex was trying to look for his first short track win, but he didn't really care. He, I think he finished second that race. He he finished. I know he finished in top three. Truex did, but I really think he finished second. Because guy who finished third probably spun across the turn finish line because. Coming out of four, Danny Hamlin started a giant wreck. It's like, really? You just spun out Chase Elliott and now you, now you want to start a big wreck? And 2017, first, I believe it's called the first Data 500. And I believe it was called the first Data 500. Oh wow, Kyle Busch even landed most laps, wow. Yeah, 
Good one. Winter break is also good. Stage two winter break is also good. Martin Truex Jr. finished second. I knew he finished at least in the top five. And everybody apart from, I'm going to say probably from third to about to about third to about uh, I'm going to say up to about 27. No, to 26. What's in bottom that rack? And that's really how intense racing can be at Martinsville. Over here in the spring, it wasn't really as intense as I thought it was going to be. I was thinking it was going to be really intense. But it wasn't really as intense as I thought. Like, okay, it was, they were racing on a Monday. Okay, one, they were racing on a Monday. Because snow came... Snow came on Saturday. That Saturday night, snow came. Didn't even know, and I was getting ready to put on Kyle Busch shirt. Got my got my phone first thing in the morning. Martinsville race postponed to Monday, and I was like, "Oh my God! Seriously, I'm gonna miss it." Then. Go with my teachers. I told them the situation. They said, yeah. Yeah, if I'm talking, though, please don't. I told them, hey, can I... Go, hey, there's a race going, going on there. Can I listen to it? And they go, yes, but if I'm talking, can you keep your earbud out? Can you take your earbud out? I was like, sure. And Clint Barr won the race. And that, was, that was his first win. Like 190 races. His first win in 190 races. His ninth overall... He got his 10th, he got his 10th just a couple months later at Michigan. So, Clint Barber got his 9th overall win at Martinsville, but his 10th overall win came. He had a little bit of a drought before his 10th overall came at, I think, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan, rain shortened. So, yeah. Then my picks are, I'm going with Kai Bush. I'm going, I'm going with a couple. Here, I'm going to choose a couple, then I'm going to playoff drivers, and I'm going to choose a couple non playoff drivers. I'm going with Kyle Bush, my favorite. I think it's going to be Chase Elliott week. Those are my playoff picks. And my non playoff predictions are the only person that I think is going to have a chance who's not in the playoffs to win Martinsville. Between Denny Hamlin and Jimmy Johnson, I guess see where they start. But I'm thinking that 48 is going to do it. If that 48 wants, is going to get a win this year, it's either going to come. Neither going to come at Martinsville, or it's going to come next week at Texas. So, last time Jimmy Johnson won in the playoffs, not in the playoffs. But he was not in the playoffs. What's that, Texas? And so Hillman's starting better than Johnson. Johnson's starting. Twenty third, and that's probably not gonna say anything. Um, um, and I'll find this out at short tracks. Um, I've actually found it out. Um, at the Martinsville race last year, the fall one, it was my first short. I didn't see it at Bristol, or, not, or uh, unless I didn't, I didn't, unless I did, and, but forgot about it. Bristol was just a couple months before. I was like, cars were stopping on the backstretch right before I they were being pulled off pit row. Funny thing, I texted the wrong person. I thought I was texting Papa, my grandpa, and I was texting my brother. My brother was at a party once, so my brother called me and said, Why are you talking about NASCAR to me? Oh, oh shit. Wrong person. I go, wait, what? Oh, crap. It's all. I was sending te I was texting my brother. When I was meaning to text my grandpa. So I'm calling back mutely said, sorry, I meant to text grandpa, but Tex said, why are the cars being stopped? And he goes, where are I go, backstretch. And I thought it was grandpa. I thought it was my grandpa. And then 
And I said, Alan said, blah, blah, blah. And Andrew could just call me. And I was like, hello? I said, what are you talking about NASCAR to me? I go, oh, shit. I go, oh, crap. I was saying in my head, oh, crap. I go, no. Why? Because I just got some texts from you about NASCAR. What? And since it wasn't a smartphone to where I can't, like, close, close the app to go to my message ad, I had to hang up on him, go to messages. Clarity showed I was texting Andrew. I was like, oh, crap. So I called Andrew back immediately and said, wrong person. And he said, way to go. But anyway, a reason why, uh, so, Rinesville Speedway and Bristol Motor Speedway, they do not want any cars start the race lap down. So what they do is that they will take the cars all out. Then, then, base car will park in either three or four, and the other cars were parked behind it. Two by two cars in each row for 20 rows until all 40 cars were off the pit row. That's all 40 cars are off pit row, they just start doing the pace laps. And how they do the pace, how they do it for like the first three, for about the first few, they they do with two. Then they get their field scrunch together. What they would do is like one pace car will go off, and then then the rest, then the other twenty will come behind. The guy in twenty first will come behind the car in nineteenth. Then the car in twenty second will come behind the car in twentieth. And just do that, and then lights will turn off on the pace guard, and it's just saying, we're going green next lap. And then, of course, the green flag goes. So if you watch Martin and wonder why the cars are being stopped, the reason is they don't want, before the race even starts, they don't want anybody to start a lap down. You guys know what to do now? Like, subscribe, comment, favorite, be nice, cool, be awesome. I am your man, Eric Pay. Do I deal with hate? Uh-uh. See you later.